I'd like to invite Council Member David Alvarez to come up to the stage. He is our keynote speaker today. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, come on, you just ate such a great meal. Good afternoon. I don't think I've ever had such a good meal in a warehouse, actually. Um, better than some restaurants, or many restaurants, I should say. Well, it's really an honor to be here. I want to thank all of you for the opportunity uh, to come and share just a few words. And uh, even though mine is titled the keynote, I would argue that Angel's words are probably some of the best that you'll take away from today. Um, thank you, Angel, for sharing your words. Appreciate it. As a, uh, as a San Diegan, it really gives me a great pleasure and honor to be here to talk to so many great San Diegans, and some of you of which I've known for some time and some of which I've gotten to know more recently. And so I appreciate the opportunity to come and share a few words with you from my perspective. And actually, it might be a really good transition because, uh, as I understand, your, your, uh, after, after the session after this one, you'll be having some time to spend to talk some of the representatives from elected offices to share some of your stories. And I think that's really good. And I want to uh, speak to that just a little bit because I will tell you, as an elected representative, um, we're always doing a lot of things. And it's, un it's not easy to come to every event that we get invited to, but when staff attends, and really kudos as a former staff member to all the staff that's here, they, they get the word of what uh, happens here uh, to, to their bosses, to their representatives, and that's how, uh, that's how this works. So I hope you take advantage of that. So again, uh, this is really a serious issue. As I think in my personal life, my daughter, she's eight years old, she's a second grader, she goes to a school where over 90% of the kids are free and reduced lunch. She goes to my local, uh, our local community school, public school, and born and raised, I am in, in Logan Heights. I still live there raising my family. And we have seen the impact that food insecurity has on children. It is very, very obvious. They, luckily, and thanks to the partnership of San Diego Unified and anybody who's here who's part of that, I want to thank you because a lot of the kids that come to my daughter's classroom, and I know because I've been in that classroom, come to school hungry. But they have the program where they get to have breakfast in the classroom as they get started so that their brains are functioning. And so I want to thank any, anybody who's involved in that. Um, but then you'll see the kids when they leave on the weekend and the food ba the backpack program. Uh, really, really critical to a lot of these kids that are my, my daughter's friends and, and classmates who, without this source of nutrition, would not have any other source of nutrition. So I see the impact happening in my daughter's classroom alone. So the work that you do isn't just um, about the, perhaps just the, the, the work that you do, it's really about our entire community. Uh, whether you're a college student who might have the need to access to food, um, and I also wanna thank our community college district, especially San Diego Community College District, if anybody's here, they know how to do that right to make sure that students like Angel have access to food all the time when they need it. It's these partnerships that are creating a healthier San Diego and a more vibrant um, uh, access to our fresh local food economy that is so important. Yes, SNAP and CalFresh is a federal program. We all know that. But we do have a local responsibility, whether you're on a city council, you're on a school board, you're on a community college board, or you work on any other one of the organizations that are providing services to people in San Diego. It is a local responsibility because those who benefit from the assistance not only benefit by having food available to them, but by having some, some substance that will keep security for them so that they can long term uh, feel like they can be successful in thriving members of our society. So there are great innovations here and you know across the table whether it's um, whether it's Cat White and what they're doing with, far, with the markets, uh, whether it's uh, Dan Moss and what they're doing uh, with community gardens. I was just with my friend uh, from EHC, Sandy Naranjo, who's here, and the work that they're doing in National City. And I really want to say thank you to those who are working in innovative ways in some of our most needed communities that have the most impact by the topic that we're talking about here today. And, and I know that growing up in a community and, and now raising my own family, a community that's considered a low-income community where we need to make sure that families have access, where we need to think strategically and innovatively on how do we um, allow, for example, our community spaces that are perhaps underutilized, ugly sometimes, vacant lots, 
to become thriving centers of community where people can have access to food, where they can have access to community in a way that is very different. Um, New York City, you probably, those of you that are more familiar with this topic, uh, know about the green markets where healthy food carts accept the EBT cards. Our county of San Diego is doing more and more on that front as well, and I wanna thank those who worked on that. We have work to do here in San Diego County, but I know with all of you here uh, that we can get moving, that we can progress, that we can have more action because we do need action. I wanna also thank the Healthy Soils Coalition. This gets to the point of what you're gonna talk about right after I'm done here. When there are problems in our community, there are ways to address them and there's ways to get things done and you need to be able to navigate those systems. And for example, when we had an issue with uh, the council, the laws of the city regarding food waste recycling, um, the organizations that were doing this good work led by the Healthy Soils Coalition really raised this issue to my attention and we were able to address that through my city council committee that I chair on the environment to ensure that anybody who wanted to address this issue had equal opportunity to do so. Um, it's these little things where I hope you all understand that your experience is really valuable to those of us in this position, like in, in, enormous. We all come with our own set of experiences. And some of us are in the education field, some of us are activists in the community, some of us are scientists, we've got engineers who sit on city, city councils who are representatives, doctors, people from all walks of lives, but we don't know it all. And that's where you step in, that's where you come in. That's where your expertise helps make a difference. So for example, in the case of San Diego, uh, working with Lou Sudebaker, who's here with our economic development department and her team to make sure that we are passing laws regulation or eliminating loss in regulation that may facilitate the work that you do, um, that's really, really critical. And without you raising your voice to that, then it doesn't get to the levels of government that it needs to get to in order to effectuate change. And so that's why I wanted to be here today to share that with you because it's one, you're one of those um, components in our society that often, uh, I will admit, people like myself is in top of mind. We're thinking about potholes, if you're a city council member, you're thinking about infrastructure, you're thinking about housing, you're thinking about all these other things. Um, sh sure, sustainability is always there in the back of your mind, but this particular issue might not be. If you're on the uh, school board, you're thinking about student success and the student uh, achievement and making sure that bus transportation is addressed. I mean, these are the issues that aren't per uh, precisely top of mind all the time. And again, that is where you come in. And that's where you can really make a difference and, and you will make a difference and you have made a difference. And, and that's why I'm here. Our enrollment rate in CalFresh here in San Diego obviously can be better. And what does that mean? It obviously helps people stay healthier, but it also contributes significantly higher to our economy. The purchasing power that exists as a result of the program really is a good thing for our economy and for San Diego. Like I said earlier, the county has made some progress over the last six years, and I appreciate those of you who've worked to make that happen, but there are more opportunities for all of us here in San Diego. There are dozens of organizations, I mentioned EHC, one of them who's working in low-income communities. Um, Diane and the work that she's doing um, is one of them. There are so many more opportunities. All you need to do is you know, talk to me. I know the the vacant lots in my community because they're all eyesores. And I, and I see the potential to do something bigger. You can talk to me, you can talk to Martha in my office, you can talk to any of the representatives here that are here today because we wanna make good things happen. But we also acknowledge that we can make them happen on our own and it requires partnership with people like you, organizations like yours, people with vision like all of you here today. So there is much more work uh, to be done I am really encouraged. I, I honestly didn't expect that this many people would be here. Uh, I think that's really good. I think that speaks to the opportunity for, for this, the message to continue to grow. It's already sort of a natural occurrence, but the fact that so many of my colleagues from elected office, the representation is here, speaks to how much we value the work that you're doing and how much we believe that there's more to be done. So once again, I wanna thank you so much for, um, for the opportunity. I do wanna thank uh, the uh, very good foundation for the invitation to come. 
I uh, appreciate that. And like I said, we're here to work in partnership. You are the experts. You are the ones that know and understand what needs to happen. But we've got to hear it from you. And you've got to tell your stories just like Angel did today. That's how you're going to make an impact. That's how you're going to make a difference. And that's how you're going to get our minds thinking uh, for when those opportunities, unique opportunities open up, whether it's making a decision on a law, a regulation, um, how to spend money, we understand that this is an important component. So once again, thank you very much. And Ellie, thanks so much for having me. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much, council member. That was really great. Um, just wanted to put in a plug for urban agriculture incentive zones, which was recently adopted. Um, and uh, Tracy and Liz are managing that program. They're, they're here from the city. So um, we really want to make sure that it's utilized and landowners are aware of it.